so welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory and it's a really warm evening. We've got this late summer heat wave. So although night has fallen, I really don't think the temperature has. So tonight we're going to do a supernova tour. We're going to start off with a supernova in a distant galaxy. Now we can't see individual stars in distant galaxies. We simply don't have the resolution, but supernovas are so bright that we can actually pick out this explosion, the stellar explosion, the star that's gone through core collapse, and we can pick that out with the telescope across millions of light years of space. We're then going to jump to a star in our own galaxy that's about to go supernova and about in astronomical terms means sometime in the next few hundred thousand years, but it's already starting to blow off and to expel mass ejections from its stellar surface and we can pick up that expanding shell of gas and dust. And lastly, we're going to see a supernova remnant. This is the expanding shell of gas and dust from a supernova that was, that was visible to our ancient ancestors some 10,000 years ago. And then we can see that expanding sphere as it grows. And this is all from the shed with the setup you can see behind me. And that's what I love about ast amateur astronomy is we get to see these sites. We get to witness them firsthand. And this has all come about from my new SharpCat Pro software license. And it's such an amazing setup. I'm really excited because I can now bring you live views of deep space live from the telescope or as live as we can get at these objects being thousands if not millions of light years away. So we're going to use my second hand Megray 90 it's mounted on the far side of the Celestron C11 and the, the C11 is what I use for my lunar and planetary my high resolution imaging so that's great I've now got both telescopes set up I can do deep sky observing with a refractor and then planetary and lunar with the big scope. Uh, I've got the laptop behind me, I've got sharp cap running on there. I've also got a second monitor as well to give me that nicer, wider field of view. Now my key rule for this is no image processing. I am not doing any flats, I'm not doing any darts, I'm not doing any post-processing. The only thing I'm doing is moving those sliders in sharp cap just to, re just to reveal all that faint hidden detail. And I sit here drinking my tea, look up at the beauty of the night sky, uh, control the mount, get to see everything on the monitor and just enjoy the beauty of the night sky. So let's go and grab some refreshing views. So this is SharpCat. Now I've got this set up on the screen. And what I've done is I've hit the live stat button. I'm recording the full area of the camera, recording in 16 bit. Obviously I'm mono, this is my solar camera. This is what I use for looking at the sun. And what I've done is I've set it for a 30 second exposure and I've put the gain in the middle, that's at about 300. And then I've scrolled down a little bit and what we've got here is subtracted darts. Now I can't be bothered to do darts and flats. I just want to keep this really simple. So if you just click the hot pixel removal, I've left it at the default settings and that gets rid of all the sort of random hot pixels and it seems to work really well. So what we've got here then is a whole load of sliders. Now you can see here as the signal's picked up, I've actually taken 25 frames, so we've got 12 minutes, 30 seconds worth of data. You've got three sliders, a black, a mid, and a white, and a white, so I tend to leave white where it is. What I'm going to do is drag that roughly up to where the graph starts paling out. That gives us a nice black point. I move the mid-level slider to the left, you can start to see, there we go, there's some details and you can play around with this, find what works well for you. There we go, look at that beautiful view. I've actually got this set up on two monitors, I've got the left one and the right one so I can see both views at the same time. I've got the settings on one and then the full capture on the other monitor. So now we're at 30 minutes, I've got that beautiful spiral arms just there. Now, some people do use the display histogram set. I tend to just leave that as it is. You can play around with both. I'm just amazed. This is a 90 millimeter refractor, second hand refractor I bought from ENS. It's mounted piggybacked on the C11. But look at the detail in Messier 101. I mean, there's no way you can see this visually. Spiral arms, H2 regions. And looking at the bigger monitor, I actually realise, look at that, there's another galaxy just there as well. So we're catching these really distant galaxies. I have to go and look up what, which one that is in the background. I mean, this is like having a large aperture telescope, like the one that Jim lent me when I went to the Winter Star Party in Florida. Absolutely stunning, you know, to be able to see this sort of level details. Now we're coming up to 15 minutes of total exposure. So of course, the more data you capture, 
the more this sort of salt and peppery, this sort of grainy picture will start to improve. As you see there, the histogram starting to improve. We're getting more and more sort of faint data. So I normally sit here, I have a cup of tea, and I'll just watch this galaxy appear. Oh, I didn't show you this. So, right, let's go back to 100%. So there's the stellar nucleus. Now all these stars are foreground stars. These are our, in our own Milky Way galaxy. They're sort of just, just in the way, just in the field of view. And I can't remember when it was. I think it was in May of this year, earlier this year. Uh, an amateur astronomer noticed there was a supernova, which is actually this star here. So that is one star in the Pinwheel Galaxy, Messier 101. It's gone supernova. It's now as bright as these stars that are actually in the foreground. That's a star, it's run out of fuel, it's gone through core collapse, and we can see that light, you know, 21 million years, uh, 21 million years across space, 21 million light years. Now the galaxy itself is all full of stars, but obviously they're way beyond the resolution of this telescope, this little garden telescope. So that's why it has this sort of milky white uh, appearance, it's just countless, countless millions upon billions of stars, all in this background haze. Uh, but this one is so bright, it actually outshines, you know, it's almost the same brightness as that whole galactic core, just that one explosion. It was much brighter, several times brighter uh, when it went off. It's now fading down. I think it's about magnitude 14, magnitude 15 now. And here I am sitting in the garden looking at a supernova in a distant galaxy. So we're just coming up to about 20 minutes now. I forgot to tell you, I also type the number in here, Messier 101, and with the 90mm Megray. I'm going to click Save. Right, so what we're going to do now is swing across to the Crescent Nebula, NGC 6888. Now this is a fascinating object. So let's get this. Uh, six. Oh, no, we want NGC. Crescent Nebula. Go to. Scroll down to here. And then this actually allows me to control the telescope. I can go up, down, left, right. I'm not going to press any of this now. I don't need to. Press that button there. It's now having a think. And it's looking at that star pattern. a 30 second oh my word there it is there it is <laughs> right so what I'm gonna do is now set up uh, the live stack earlier why is that oh I, I always do this I forget because we haven't adjusted the sliders I always do this so we've captured the first image I'll move the dark but there it is and we'll do that right so while the camera is capturing the data. I'm going to talk you through what we're looking at here. Now, this is a star. This is a Wolf Rayet star. Now, this is a star that is about 20 times the solar mass, and it's burning through its fuel so fast in the nuclear fusion, it's actually running out of fuel. And what's happening is it's actually blasting out this outer shell, its outer gas. And this is its final sort of last few hundred thousand years before it goes supernova. And that's some of the gas that's actually come out. So we've just seen an actual supernova in the in that distant galaxy in Messier 101. This is a star in our own galaxy that is about to go supernova. And it's already started pumping out some of its outer stellar atmosphere. So it's actually that star there. And we can actually see it forms this sort of crescent, this sort of E shape. I think it looks a little bit like the sort of the Euro symbol. Um, you know, the Euro currency symbol. So this star here is 600,000 times brighter than our own sun. It's got 21 times the solar mass and it's five times the solar diameter. So we don't want to be anywhere near this star. I've actually just nipped inside. I made myself a cup of tea. My, my sister-in-law, Nicola, Nicola H got me this and it's a picture of a lunar eclipse, like out of one of those old sort of Victorian books. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and I'm literally watching live on the screen 
this view of the question there. What have we got now? 60 minutes 30 seconds on the screen. Every now and then I just to give a quick a quick tweak of the sliders. Nothing serious. Let's see if that makes a bit of a change. But the weather's glorious. I mean it's nearly yeah it's going to about midnight, it's about 11.40 local time. And I'm still outside, you know, just a shirt sleeves. So what we're going to do now is move further up through Cygnus and we're going to find an actual supernova remnant. So this isn't a star in another galaxy, this isn't a star in our own galaxy. This used to be a star. It exploded several thousand years ago and what we can see is that expanding shell of gas and dust from the star, from the exploded star, uh, as it impacts in the stellar medium. It's one of the most beautiful objects we can see, certainly up here in the northern hemisphere. It's called the Veil Nebula. It's in Cygnus. It's not far from the Crescent Nebula. And I think it's quite a cool thing. We've seen a supernova that's actually going off. We've got uh, a star that's about to go supernova. And then we've got a star that a few thousand years ago, you know, in the time of our ancient ancestors, uh, went supernova. Get my torch ready. Go to. So in there somewhere, I can just see it there, is a supernova remnant. There it is. So two and a half minutes now, let's move you to there. Sort of focuses to a point at that end and becomes more thin towards the star and very diffuse at this end. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely stunning. You can see why it's called a veil. It's very thin, lacy filaments alongside that bright star. So this is a star that exploded thousands of years ago. And this expanding shell of gas and dust has gone out into the interstellar medium. And it's formed this huge sphere in space, you know, light years across. And what we can see, because it's so tenuous, it's literally the edge bits. The edge bits when we're looking along of that sphere of gas is what we can see from the Earth. So I always go to this bit first. This is next to that bright star, 52 Cygni. And this is a beautiful little tendril. To me, it always looks like it's, um, you know, like a, a candle smoke. You know, when you blow a candle out, you get that sort of long, tenuous so we've seen a supernova in a pinwheel galaxy, we've seen a star that's about to go supernova in our own galaxy, and now we've seen a supernova remnant, you know, there's nothing left of this star, just that expanding shell of gas and dust. And in time this will form a nebula, and then that will re-coalesce and reform uh, stars and planets and all that sort of thing as well. So all that dust cloud reforms. Sounds like the neighbourhood cats are just kicking off. So of course just going to tell you I am relaxing but my heart is just <laughs> kicked off when I heard that. So what we're going to do now is switch across to the other side of this supernova remnant, remnant 6992. Go to. Uh, back to one second exposures. And let's then set the live stack up again. So we need 30 second exposures. 30 second exposures, gain of 300. Live stack on. Clear the old one. Fail do, so I don't confuse it with the other one that first image to come through. Exciting this, I really do enjoy this. Oh my word, look at that. Right, so I think I am going to cancel that live stack and I am going to go 
came back to, so I need to shift you that all up a bit. So I can go back to these. It really is a beautiful object. So what I'll do then, I'll switch back to the live stacking mode. 30 seconds. 300 live stack. Look at that. The other half of that supernova remnant. We've seen one half, which was the one next to that bright star 52 signal. We've now gone to the other side of the spherical bubble. <gasps> Look at that. So as you can see, it's, it's got a bit chilly, um, so I put my jumper on. Um, we're not having a lot of luck with the veil. I've got a nice shot and stuff, but the, a lot of drifting cloud coming through. So I think what I'm going to do is swing across, swing the telescope across to the other part of the sky. And we're going to have a look at some a distant galaxies, some beautiful galaxies. So bear with me and we'll swing across to towards Andromeda. So this is probably a good place to stop the video. Unfortunately, the sky never really cleared. It always had that sort of thin haze, that thin cirrus over. So it wasn't good enough for deep sky observing, but what I did do was swing the big scope across to Saturn. So we did some awesome views of that beautiful ring system, caught some of the moons as well. And I'll talk you through in my next video how to capture process and then present that sort of beautiful Saturn imagery, that high resolution imagery. But I just can't believe how awesome this live stacking is. I feel like I've got, you know, a massive observatory telescope now, you know, being able to see those wonderful details in deep sky objects or switch across to the moon and the planets, but with the same, with the same configuration, the same setup. So really exciting. So the next thing I want to do is put the camera on the big scope. So you have that C11 with the F6 focal reducer performs and I'm really excited to, to bring you that video. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, chuck us a like. We don't charge a Patreon account. We're not asking you to send us money because I've broken my telescope and we'll look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.